You're listening to the Gridiron Wine Podcast, where three girls, two Brits, one Yank, discuss the beautiful game of American football whilst drinking delicious wine. Enjoy the show. And welcome back to the Green Iron Way podcast. I'm Liz, aka NFL Girl UK, and with me are my co hosts Dana from Alto Football and Shona from 99 Yards. In this episode, we'll be discussing the Pro Bowl players who've just been announced, the current standings and playoff picture, and as we always do, we'll go through our listener questions at the end. But first, we need to say congratulations and raise a toast because on Sunday it was announced that the Heisman Trophy, which is the most prestigious award in college football, was awarded to Joe Burrow. Joe is the quarterback for Louisiana State. Uh, Burrow from Athens in Ohio is the second LSU player to win the trophy and the first since the late Billy Cannon did so in 1959. His Heisman triumph makes him the third consecutive player to win the award and seventh overall. He had an extraordinary season, passing for 4,715 yards and 48 touchdowns, whilst adding another 280 yards and three scores on the ground. He had a remarkable completion percentage of 77.9%, which is the best in Heisman history. As the field general for the nation's top events, he led the number one LSU to a 13-0 record, the SEC title, which is the first since 2011, and its first birth in college football playoff. So Joe, here's to you, congratulations, and ladies, let's say cheers. Cheers, Joe, congratulations. (laughs) Cheers, Joe, well done. This week, the 2020 Pro Bowl players were announced. The game is an AFC versus NFC matchup and takes place at Camping World Stadium in Orlando on Sunday the 26th of January. For those unfamiliar with the Pro Bowl, the players are determined by a consensus vote of fans, players and coaches. Each group's vote counted one third towards determining the 88 All-Star players who were selected for the Pro Bowl. So. 30 teams had at least one player selected, and 24 clubs had multiple players chosen as All-Stars. The Ravens, including second-year quarterback Lamar Jackson, placed a league best of 12 players on the roster, whilst the New Orleans Saints led the NFC with seven players selected. 25 of the players selected are first-time All-Stars. This includes three rookies, defensive end Nick Bosa for 49ers, return specialist Michael Hardman for Chiefs, and return specialist Deontay Harris for the Saints. But here's my question. How big of a deal is the Pro Bowl? Well, you have to look at it at two different ways. Um, I was lucky enough to go cover the Pro Bowl last year. I'm going back to the Pro Bowl to cover it as media again this year. And while you're there, it's a big deal. The players are having so much fun. They're goofing off on the field. They have, you know, they get to play with players from other teams and they get to, you know, goof off. It's very fun, lighthearted, kind of a silly atmosphere because there is no weight behind the game. It's really just a week or so vacation for these players. Now that's not all they do. They also do some great community events. They do all kinds of things for charities. It's it's really a, a full week of events. So I think to the players it's a big deal because you get a nod from the fans because let's be honest it, they say they split it a third and a third, but these fans <laughs> stuff these ballot boxes like nobody's business. There are players who definitely deserve to be um, on the Pro Bowl who never make it. Tyrion Matthew is one of them. He's a fantastic player out of Kansas City. Has never been. We have all pro players, you know, the best of the best every single year who have never been to the Pro Bowl yeah. because fans don't vote for them. They just don't have the name of, you know, the appeal or, or the name recognition. And so... For the players, I think it's a big deal because they get to go, they get to hang out with their football players, they get to have a good time and play in a fun game, do the skills challenge, that sort of thing. (laughs) I think it's a bigger deal, though, to the fans to just get your team's players there. I don't know that it really makes a huge difference, although there are Pro Bowl bonuses built into some contracts, and so it can be money. 
for them too. So I think that that is really fun. But if we're really honest and we're, you know, you know, being completely truthful, the Pro Bowl is a popularity contest and yeah. that, and that's fine <laughs> and that it's just for fun. However, it's very different in baseball. And, and I don't know if you ladies know this or if our listeners know this, but in baseball, whoever, whatever side, either in football would be NFC or AFC and the, the, the two divisions in baseball, they, whoever wins it gets home field advantage for the World Series. So it's taken a little more seriously in baseball um, because it has some weight to it. There is a whoever wins gets a prize, which sounds crazy, but it's a huge, huge advantage. And I think it would be taken differently if the NFL did something along those lines. But because the Super Bowl is at a neutral location, then that would be harder for them to do. So I don't know, bump the money. I don't know, do something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have much else to add apart from I don't think I've ever thought, you know what, tonight I'm going to watch the Pro Bowl. It's probably not <laughs> something I've really like entered into my head. But yeah, I, I agree with Dana saying, if you watched what it was like last year, like on social media, you could see all the players goofing around and having fun, which is nice to see. Because, yeah. you know, after a long season, maybe you just need a little bit of vacation, but still playing ball, why not? That's it, and I think that's it. It's a fun game. Um, I just wonder, though, like, is it even played in the UK? And I just missed it. Um, I don't know. It's the weekend before the Super Bowl. There's mm-hmm. no other football games on. Um, I don't know if it's... Televised. it. I don't think yeah. It's, yeah. I think, I think it's, it's, usually, usually, it's like, just not advertised. I think yeah, it's like maybe Game Pass maybe show it. I yes. think. It's, usually, it's usually an afternoon game. Um, here in the states, and so I, I would not sure if it was there. I will say this though: one thing that is really fun um, for me, I think the skills challenge has actually become a little more popular than the game because of <laughs> the goofy things that they do. Yeah. But I, I put this out there last year, and it kind of got shot down a little bit. But I still stick by it. I think sometimes when you see two players playing together, maybe from another team, it might perk a general manager's idea and say. Yeah. Hmm, those two actually have a little bit of chemistry there. Uh, watching Russell Wilson and Adam Thielen last year, I was all aboard the get Thielen to Seattle because <laughs> the way they play together was fantastic. And so, you know, there's probably not a lot of weight there to that, but I just think it's really fun to see team players from different teams play together. I think that's a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to raise my glass and say cheers to all the players who've made the squad for the Pro Bowl. Good luck, guys. Cheers. Congratulations. Cheers. <laughs> well done. Cheers. Okay, so who would think by December that we would be saying the NFC East is as close a division as it is right now with the Dallas Cowboys and the Eagles on 7-7? Seven and seven. Um, Wherever we look at it, whoever wins this one will be heading to the playoffs with a slightly off record. But who is to say that none of these teams will win a playoff game? Like, we've seen this before with the Carolina Panthers in 2014. And obviously the um, Seattle Seahawks did it in 2010. So the Cowboys and Eagles play each other this Sunday. um, And it's a must-win game for both. Um, So I'm pretty sure that everyone will feel like it's quite a tantalizing game um, coming into that. Because we never expected their records to be quite like this. Well, I think, anyway, by December. Um, I can also claim I will die on this hill now this season (laughs) (laughs) the NFC West uh, NFC North and AFC East have been fantastic to watch Um, now as all NFL fans I'm sure even if you're neutral or you do support these teams they're all waiting for that showdown between Seattle and the 49ers on December 29th and I can bet my donkey Sherman is returning for that game. <laughs> uh, in the NFC North, Aaron Rodgers is brought in brought into a more balanced approach from um, Mike LaFleur. So that's obviously helped him. And Kirk Cousins is also enjoying a prosperous 2019. But the one that has really surprised me, and I will, um, no many will be watching that game on Saturday, is the AFC East. Can you believe the Buffalo Bills? <laughs> The little brother team, the one team that everyone roots for, could potentially be challenging the New England Patriots for that title. Like, how has this happened? Are the Bills ready to take that crown off the Pats? I reckon they could still live a game and potentially a division. And what a story that would that be? Just to see Brady being like, I have not won a division. And Bill would be like, I need to conjure my, like, Sith Lords to understand what's going on. <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> My question for you both 
is who sits pretty at the top of the Christmas tree at the end of the uh, season? Who takes that title? Ooh. Well, <laughs> that is a tough one, to say the least. So I, I think if you're looking at it, I, I agree with you in that I believe the NFC West, I just wrote an article about this, the NFC West is probably the most competitive division right now. Even with the Eagles and the Cowboys being at 7-7, seven and seven, you still feel like one of them's going to trip over their own shoelace at some point. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's coming at some point. Um, and so then you have, you know, the, the AFC East. And I will tell you, I am so thrilled for Bills fans to Me be too. right there in the mix. It's so good. It's about time someone, you know, we had a changing of the guard and we knew it was coming, right? Brady cannot <laughs> play till he's 80. So therefore, we knew it was coming at some point. But to, I thought it would be after Brady. But with Brady still in the vision and the bills are coming up, it makes it for really fun over there. I think it's going to be really great. So I think, to be quite honest with you, I still think the Patriots are going to win that division. God help me. But <laughs> I, I think that it's going to come down to the absolute wire. It happens every single time. Patriots always manage to get there. Whatever. Just I need to face that. They're always going to be there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's true. So we we have this uh, friend of ours, a friend of our turf. Her name is Michelle Jinx, and she is a Cowboys fan. But she always says, until you prove differently, you have to go with what we know. And she always said, the Patriots will keep winning until they prove that they can't. Yeah. This might be the year. Do you really think so? Maybe. I don't think so, no. I think <laughs> I, no, I, I, I was, do think that... I do think that the Bills are chomping on their heels and that, unfortunately, fortunately, if you are a Patriots fan, um, unfortunately, if you're a Bills fan, I think that's going to make the Patriots play even a little harder. Yeah. Well, I was actually speaking to a Ravens fan the other day. He doesn't even have the Patriots making the championship game. How insane would that be if they didn't even make the championship game? I mean, That, (laughs) that would be a little crazy. I, you know, it's just hard to fathom, right? Yeah, I, just, I, I, so long. yeah. I don't even want to try and guess who's going to win NFC at West because it keeps chopping and changing more than I, <sighs> I change <know>. my <laughs> underwear, I think. Right. We're, I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. But yeah, I do think that it's, it, it, it's been a little crazy. <laughs> well, I'm going to give all my cheers to the Buffalo Bills because Ooh. I probably think everyone who is not a New England Patriot fan is rooting for you <laughs> <laughs> come this weekend. So good luck, Bills. Good luck, Bills. Cheers, Cheers. Bills. <laughs> Woohoo. Oh, I'm just so impressed with those. They've done all season. Oh, that's great. <laughs> all right, so let's let's talk about these playoffs for just a little bit. And like you were saying, it, it's a little confusing, right? So the the crazy things that have come up, we know currently right now that in the NFC, the um, the Seattle Seahawks are in the number one seed. The Packers are in the number two seed. And then we have the Saints in third, Cowboys at their seven and seven and fourth. We have the San Francisco 49ers at the fifth seed, and the Vikings are the sixth seed. In the AFC, the Ravens are the first seed. I think they're going to stay there, but let's just say that's where they're at right now. The Patriots are in the second seed. Then we have the Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs in the third. We have the Texans in the fourth, the Bills in the fifth seed, and the Steelers currently are in the sixth seed. So the interesting thing about it is there was a lot of of hubbub and questions about how are the Seahawks the first seed when they yeah. Saints beat them and then and what it all comes down to is there's a whole bunch of tiebreakers so in the NFC there are there are, let's see four teams four teams you cannot tell me the NFC is stronger than the <laughs> AFC but four teams at 11 and 3 the Seahawks the Packers the San Francisco 49ers the New Orleans Saints so what happens is when you have more than two teams in a tie Head-to-head tiebreakers no longer matter. So the Seahawks being beat by the Saints, that does not is not a tiebreaker any longer because there's other teams with the same record. Okay. So because of that, it then jumps off into divisional tiebreakers and conference tiebreakers, and the list is long. Let me just tell you this. <laughs> so it goes head-to-head, and then best one loss tied percentage within your division, and then best one loss tied percentage in the conference, best 
um, record against common opponents, and then strength of victory, strength of schedule. It goes down to combined rankings in conference teams and points scored and points allowed. All net points in common games, net points in all games, net touchdowns in all games. It gets so detailed so that there is always a way to break the tie. And so really, if, if you start to get confused or before you start shooting off questions out into the world, just you can go to Wikipedia, look up NFL playoff tiebreakers. It gives you the exact breakdown. So it's really easy that way um, to be able to figure it out. Now, but where you can really start to have a lot of fun I mean, a lot of fun is ESPN. And no, we are not sponsored by ESPN. I'm getting no <laughs> kickbacks for that. But if you go to ESPN, they have a playoff predictor or they call it a playoff machine where you can go and you can pick the games and see how it changes the playoff picture. And you can do week 16 and week 17 to see how things fall. Let me tell you, it really is going to come down to just a handful of games and who wins them. And it's not the head to head games. Yes. The NFC West will probably come down to Seattle, San Francisco in the last week, but where they end up in the seating in the playoff seating has to do with no, not games that they play, but other games. Same with the AFC. We're talking about how the new England Patriots might not even end up in the AFC championship game. Well, they might not even get a first round bye, which has happened for literally as long as I can remember. They might end up having to play, God forbid, a wild card game. Oh and my God, hell has to do. I know. Hell has frozen over because they <laughs> were having to play a wild card game. And a lot of it has to do with Kansas City winning, how they fall, which Kansas City's games are, are pretty, I hate to say guaranteed because nothing's guaranteed in, in the NFL, but they, they've got some pretty good games coming up. It has to do... On the NFC side, it has to do with the Saints-Titans game, which I think that's going to have a lot. That's going to be a lot closer than some people think it's going to be. Um, believe it or not, it comes down to Green Bay, Minnesota. Whether or not Minnesota gets a fifth seed or a sixth seed or a home playoff game or not, it's also fun. So I really encourage you guys, go to ESPN, look up the playoff machine, and play with it. Wins and losses and how it falls, um, and that hopefully will kind of clear things up for people a little bit because it's really complicated. <laughs> I mean, if ESPN want to sponsor us, though, like we can, oh, we're willing to surely. have that. Yeah, <laughs> just putting that out okay. there. ESPN, I'll promote your stuff every week. ESPN, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no worries. Just, yeah. you know, now, give me. I a have call. found a, I have found a couple other playoff predictors online um, that they weren't right. They didn't have the tiebreakers completely correct. ESPN, I know NFL. I think NFL.com has one. I, I'm. I really like this ESPN one though. So nothing against the rest, but I really think that that one's probably the most accurate. Yeah. I'm literally having a look at it now. It's really cool. Fun. Really, it's really a cool. Fun. Yeah. I'm going to tweet it out as well. I'll tweet it out so everyone who's listed could play around with it too. <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to be doing at work now. <laughs> <laughs> so productive, you guys. <laughs> Right. I'm joking. I'm joking, bosses. I will be subbing the pages too. Oh, sure. <laughs> wink, wink. No, no. <laughs> all right. So I want to say, first of all, cheers to everyone who's e all the teams that are even in the hunt right now, because this has been a wild, wild season. And cheers to ESPN for putting out a very fun playoff <laughs> predictor. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Okay, ladies, before we end the show, we've got some questions from our listeners. The first question is from Graham. He asks, do you see Mike McCarthy back as a head coach next year in the NFL? And would he suit Dallas as a potential landing spot? Um, I, I think Mike McCarthy probably will end up back in the NFL, if not next year, the next year. I think that those last couple of years in Green Bay, that the stigma of him fighting with, God forbid, fighting with Aaron Rodgers has kind of shooken off of him a little bit. And I think that he, um, he he was such a successful coach for so long. Someone is going to take a chance on him. And I, I think it's deserved. Um, whether or not that's Dallas, I don't know. <laughs> as, as we talked last time about this, whoever takes the Dallas job is going to have to... Um, Gosh, this sounds terrible, and I, 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 but I think people understand. They're going to have to be somewhat, you know, 
subservient to Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones makes every decision. And so you need a head coach that can roll with that and then play with the players he has given, you know, strategize with the players that Jerry Jones has deemed can be uh, Dallas Cowboys. Um, I, after the beat, the game against the Rams, I'm now not a hundred percent sure that Jason Garrett will be gone. If he oh, can no. manage to win that division, <laughs> I think that even if they don't win a playoff game, I think that he'll stay one more year, but I, I see Mike McCarthy in a couple of different places. He'd be interesting in Carolina. Um, he'd be interesting in Cleveland, although I'm still really holding out hope Jim Harbaugh ends up in Cleveland really badly. <laughs> and, um, but so I think it'd be, between him and Ron Riviera, I think they will probably be the first couple of picks um, for new coaches, but I, I just don't know about Dallas. I hear he's rolling out the Bollinger now because he's run out of uh, Dom Perignon for <laughs> 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 And our second question uh, comes from Brit NFL, uh, who asks, and we have to be careful with this one, because it's just going to sound like we don't like the Patriots, which, you know, everyone knows we don't. Uh, what's your unbiased <laughs> view of Spygate 2? Having now seen the footage, should Pats be punished? <laughs> Here's my issue. This is not the first time they've cheated. Do nope. I think they will be punished? Maybe. not as Not as extreme as I think they should be. What I think is, if they can film the Bengals, who were on a, who did not win a game at that point from the sideline to look at what they were doing for their play cards, yeah. what are they doing to teams like the 49ers or the Chiefs or, you know, the Seahawks or Packers, all these teams who are the Ravens, all these teams who are with winning records and, you know, grinding out a play that's working for them and it's effective. They're doing this against the Bengals and they've been caught doing it. I, I just can't fathom the thought process. I can't. Yeah. I just don't understand why you would even think to do it in the first place. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> so, Here it goes. Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick has always been known for someone who takes every advantage that he can, which he should, to be honest with you as a coach. You will, of course, want to get every single advantage you can. Yeah. But he pushes every rule, quote unquote, to its absolute you know, limit and then pops right on over it sometimes over the line, you know, and so they have been caught doing that. Um, there's an article that came out today saying that they've been recording people, you know, for years. Now, granted, the rule didn't start. I think that you couldn't record in certain places didn't start till 2006 after the last time they got caught recording. <laughs> but um, the, the thing of it is, is that does does this change who was on his team? No. It doesn't take away that Tom Brady is still one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. It doesn't take away that he still can build a defense. But it gives them a tactical advantage. They are not going to be punished for this. It'll be a, If anything, it'll be a fine. Um, what will happen is what has happened in the past is that teams will change the way they deal with the Patriots. So we all know that when you go to Foxborough, the away team's radio system and the uh, comm system that they use to talk to the quarterback, it never works. Their radios go out all the time just on that side of the field. Teams then had to adjust for the quote-unquote lack of communication because amazingly for every team, their radios don't work on that side. <laughs> they also had to start locking when they go to Foxborough. They started to have lock the locking the away team's locker room because the Patriots – were caught sending in people oh into the away team locker room to get their playbooks. And <sighs> they were caught doing that. So now teams lock, they like put chains around the away team <laughs> locker room so that they can't get into it. So what it has happened, and I will tell you once again, was there a rule that said they couldn't send someone in there? Nope. Is it good sportsmanship? Nope. But Bill Belichick does not care about that. And that's okay. He this is, is a coach. wild. I know. <laughs> no. No, that's it's a bit like it. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like that Leeds thing um, last year when uh, Bielsa did the Spygate at training. He had a guy uh, climb up a tree to look yeah. at Darby <laughs> County's training. And then Bielsa was like, what are you talking about? We do this all the time in Italy. Like, nobody cares. Like, you can just watch our training. <laughs> it's just like, it's just it, like, it, Bill it, is literally like that. He's like, I don't yeah. care. I'm basically stone-cold Steve Austin. I make my own rules. 
<laughs> exactly. It's not against the rule, so why wouldn't you do it? And you know what? It's hard logic to argue with because if it's not as in, in the rule. But so the teams then have to adjust. The teams have to adjust the way they deal with the Patriots in order to protect themselves. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. They're going to have extra security up in the press boxes. They're going to have extra security, just like the Bengals. The Bengals knew something was up. And they sent that security guard. That's the greatest tape, by the I way. Know. <laughs> and so he's like, come on, man. You know, it was just so good. But so that's what's going to end up happening. There'll be a fine. And then once again, other teams will have to adjust to something that the Patriots have done. <laughs> well, I want to wish everyone, and I know all three of us do. We First of all, we want to thank you guys for listening to our podcast and engaging with us on Twitter. We have such a good time doing this. And from all of us to all of you, Happy holidays. Enjoy your time with your family and enjoy the upcoming playoffs. Happy holidays. Happy Christmas, everyone. <laughs> That's all for this week's episode of Gridiron and Wine. Thank you to everyone for tuning into our podcast. If you liked what you heard, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and of course, tell a friend about the show. Until next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.